Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Antimatter Chemistry. In today's episode, we're gonna finally set up our periodic table of drawers. In the last two episodes, I think, I forgot to make the phytogenic insulator and it bothered some people that it's not complete. So let's just get that completed. <laughs> there we go. We also get 64 phytogrow that we can use as bone meal. And we have uh, chapter three completed. Uh, the reason that I want to set up proper drawers is because I want to also move some stuff into compacting drawers from our storage disks, which are currently all full on types, and I just have like a ton of ingots that we can move out, and that's going to clear up a bunch of space. So I want to clear this space and also set up the periodic table. And for that, I want to use framed drawers, which I have right here. And the way you set these up is you put them in here and then if we grab, for example, some sulfur that I have right here, oh, sulfur, give it to me, thank you. Uh, and we go and get some antimatter, like so. I did the math of how many of these we need. Yellow, I have it written down, six. So we just need eight of these uh, and then we can toss this away. So if we put, uh, I believe this is the front, yeah, so that's gonna make a yellow front, which is gonna make it look really nice. And we possibly need some sort of trim. Do we want to go with white? Uh, what do you have on the periodic table? You have a black trim around it. So what if we take some black antimatter? I think that's just uh, charcoal. Yeah, or charcoal. Carbon, I should say. So we're gonna take a little bit of this. Just gonna make a stack. That should be enough, I think, for what we need. So we need six of these. So if we put this here, that's just going to turn everything around it on black, which should be all that we need. We could turn the... Uh, one of these turns the outside to something. Yeah, yeah, this is the kind of like trim that you get. So we could do a different type of trim or a different type of inside. But it really doesn't matter what is on the outside because we're going to see the front of the drawer anyway only. So if we make ourselves one, two, three, four, five, six of these, like so. That should be the yellow. And then I need six more orange and a whole bunch of other colors. And I ran into a problem because from the antimatters, we can make a bunch of these from the um, materials that we have right now. And I'm running into a problem with lime. We need neon, which is only made by dissolving lime antimatter, which is only made in the fission multi-block, where we basically don't have this yet. Because that, I believe, is here in chapter five. Right here is the fission multi-block. So um, we're gonna get there eventually. But for the time being, I think I'll just make the drawers for lime out of maybe lime wool or something, and we can change them up later. I think you can just pick up the drawer, put it back in here. I think we can change it up, right? We can put this guy in here and then change it to whatever. Yeah, we can. So eventually we'll pick them up and change them up to the lime antimatter once we get there. I have managed to assemble the periodic table and in doing so, I also got a little bit of an idea of kind of what I wanna do for my base in this series. So I wanna assemble cubes of different heights and variations that connect to one another, possibly maybe like on corners and on edges and stuff like that. We're gonna figure it out as we go. I want it kind of to be like abstract and not centered and not symmetrical in terms of where we set up a new cube and you'll see when I get there. So the purpose of the first cube here is going to be to house our drawers. It's going to have drawers on all four sides, I think, or maybe on two sides and two sides can be like the entrance possibly. Uh, so in here, we need to connect this drawer controller to the drawers all up top. So I made some framed trim from storage drawers and I just colored it all white. So if we toss it in here, it should connect up nicely. And the reason I have the drawer controller right there, I could hide it underneath, uh, down below, but it does a weird thing with the frame trim. Yeah, this one doesn't get a full on white uh, connection and I could hide it like so, but then you just get drawers and up on drawers, up on drawers that are not connected. And I think we are gonna hide it this way but we're just gonna replace this uh, this trim directly with the drawer controller because it's gonna be easier that way for us to just have everything nice and hidden. So if we, I could be using my ax to make this really quick, but I am not. 
So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna grab some white antimatter hook it up like so and if we lock we should see all of the drawers are locked which is wonderful and then we can also quantify to have all the numbers displayed and now what we have to do here is just come over and we can just do this right it's gonna pop all the drawers off they're gonna end up here in the floor and we can grab ourselves our satchel for example it still has a little bit of space we can toss in a bunch of these drawers here, like so. Uh, I'm also gonna grab the storage upgrades that we have. I also made a stack of void upgrades. I think we're gonna need a bit more. I think I got a bit more obsidian. Yeah, we can make some more when we need to. Uh, but I wanna add all of the things into its corresponding spots. So I'm gonna do a quick, possibly speedy up bit of me moving everything. Everything that we had is now in a single drawer and I'm thinking of just breaking down all of these that we have in here except for these which we have like a couple of thousands of because we're probably going to put them in the storage on the wall at some point anyway so I might as well just break all of these down because there's a couple of hundreds of them we can toss them through the chest over there and just sort them out as well. And the next thing that I'm going to do is clean out our storage system and put a whole bunch of ingots into compacting drawers. So I'm just going to set them up right over here. It's going to be easiest to do it right here rather than uh, everywhere else because we can just uh, go in here. Let's say we look at iron. We don't even need to extract iron ingots. We just extract iron blocks specifically and apparently the whole system's not going to be capable of handling that. But we're just going to do this. Like so, we can grab the iron then, we can just toss it in a compacting drawer and we should be done with it. I have moved most of the things into compacting drawers. I am debating on if I want to keep like netherrack in a compacting drawer because that can be compressed into compressed and double compressed netherrack and all the way up to six tuple or something and also gravel and dirt. We could totally do that for uh, these two items as well. And as far as sand goes, I think I want to keep it this way because we are going to need probably sandstone for some stuff, but we don't really need compressed sand for anything. So we're just going to keep it that way and we can just quantify everything like that. And I also missed a couple of drawers that I had, uh, I think, in my bag or something. So I will sort these out off camera. But uh, as far as these goes, as I said, I'm going to go melt those and I'm just going to sort everything out. Now that we've moved everything out of the drawers, it's very hard to craft something in the system, so we're gonna sort that out by quickly making a storage bus, for which we need some charged Certus Quartz, which is the easiest solution is to just charge it here. Uh, oh, we have to leave it be, I think. Or do you need some sort of chargey thingy? No, you just do, okay, you're just very, very slow. Okay, gotcha. So we're gonna do half a stack in here. I'm gonna grab a chest. And we're gonna turn it into an iron chest at some point, but uh, if we have it here, the compactor shouldn't do anything. We're gonna do, um, we'll move it on the top at some point, but that should be fine for now. We should get a bit of charred certus quartz. There we go. Uh, I need to grab a little bit of iron here, and also I think like four stacks of cobblestone, and another stack of iron, another stack of redstone. 
We're gonna need some diamonds. We're gonna need a bunch of gold and that should be good. I'm also gonna grab a bunch of Certus Quartz here. Okay, so I think we should have everything that we need to make ourselves an inscriber. I made a bit more slime balls in between episodes, but we need pistons before we can do any of that. So wood, oh, we have a little bit, so it should be fine. I think the advanced inscriber just requires the one inscriber, right? So we can easily make ourselves some pistons. One and two. That is the annoying part of crafting with things in your inventory, but that should be done sooner rather than later. Okay, sticky pistons. We then need charred certus plus quartz plus redstone. So I need to grab a little bit more nether quartz and redstone. And we have water on the floor right here. So do we have a little bit more chart certus, please? Thank you. There we go. Cool. And we can toss 10 of these, that and that into the water and it should make flux crystals like so. Uh, unnatural. I also didn't show that I made an ender tank in between episodes. So we have one on top of here making the tiny rubbers, which we have a bunch of now. Uh, and uh, that is just simply transferring water. Okay. So inscriber, can we make you now? Yes, wonderful. We do need the presses. I assume that there are some recipes for this. Press, ah, molten quartz with a gear makes a calculation press. Uh, molten diamond, two gems, makes the engineering press and molten gold, electrum, makes the logic press. Okay, that should be easy enough. I have, I think, iron gears in here. Uh, let's grab three. How many quartz bits do you want for the press? Uh, 129. Each quartz makes 144. It's like 10 quartz. Nine. Let's do that many and we'll just pour it out or empty it or whatever. Uh, this is off so we can do gears like that. We also need a couple of diamonds melted. And then it was electrum. So I need some silver as well. How much electrum did you want? Uh, one block. Okay, that's one block. So nine quartz would be what we need. Alrighty, we can now pour in the quartz and then the electrum and the diamond to make the corresponding presses. And in between, while this is all pouring, this should be done very quickly here. So I can pour the other one. There we go. In between here, we're going to make ourselves some more glass cable. I'm pretty much going to use up most of the fluids that I have here. I did make some wool in between episodes. Uh, you can use the flax here directly to make string and it makes three string which is kind of nice uh we're gonna get it from we're gonna get string from the mob farm at some point anyway but we're gonna turn this into covered cable uh, and then we need redstone and some glowstone which we have over here Give me a stack thank you very much we can go farm a bunch of glowstone from the nether now when we need it but we're gonna do this and this to make ourselves some smart cable I'm not going to make dense cable just yet because we're not going to use that much um, stuff or that many channels right now. But I at least want to see how many channels we have. Uh, so the last iron gear goes here with the two diamond gems like so. Awesome. So what do we need to make the advanced inscriber? Because that is going to have more functionality. We just need two engineering presses, a bit of iron, a bit of hoppers. So that should be good. I want to make some of these acceleration cards which require calculation processors, which require pure Certus Quartz, which is made with Certus Quartz seeds in the Phytogenic Insulator, or you can use the Crystal Growth Chamber, which is a bit more difficult and expensive to make, and we already have the Phytogenic Insulator, so we're gonna use this guy. I snagged the um, Ender Tank from the top here, and we're just gonna open it up to give you water. We can then toss in a little bit of Glowstone here, and go make a couple of the seeds, which is, I believe, just some Certus Quartz dust and some sand. There we go. That's going to make us 16 Certus Quartz seeds we can toss you in here. Apparently not. Do we need a special thing? Phytogenic Insulator Glowstone. Certus Quartz Power. Do you need to go in a specific spot? No? Why does this not work?
It says that this is the recipe. Hello? Drop a certain square seed made for certain square that yeah into a puddle of water. Hello? Why does this not work? I have no idea. If we toss it in here, set you to auto input. Are you gonna pull it in automatically? You are not. Interesting. I guess we have to use the crystal growth chamber then. Or I could just toss it in water and wait six years, but that's not gonna happen. So uh, the crystal growth chamber requires one, two, three, four, five, six of these. And now it makes me sad that I turned all my cable into smart cable because the growth chamber requires a bunch of these, which require a bit of cable as well. Uh, and I'm slowly running out of Fluix crystals. So we are gonna need a bit more charge service. So let's get this charging up and we can see about making this. This will now make us the crystal growth chamber. We can set this guy up right here and we can now toss in these Certus Quartz crystals, which will, or Certus Quartz seeds, which will grow fairly quickly into the pure Certus Quartz. And here I made two printed engineering presses. We can then toss this plus a bit of redstone. Oh, silicon. Totally forgot about silicon. Uh, is that just sand? Normally it's sand in a pulverizer. It is sand in a manufactory. Or we can just, okay, ah, cool, simple enough. I have a bunch of silicon here somewhere. I have to get used to where items are now, at least for the time being. Silicon, where are you, silicon? Here it is, gotcha. One, two, three, four is all I can carry. And we have a bunch of silicon dioxide, so we can just uh, turn that into more silicon when needed. So silicon, boom. We're gonna toss all of this in here. This is only gonna make a couple, I think like 16 or so. Uh, we also have a bunch of more stuff that we need to melt down. Oh, sodium chloride. Basically, um, I didn't know what I wanted to say there, but we need to toss uh, Hold on. I didn't make all of the presses. Silicon press. Seared stone, four blocks, two ingots. And an iron gear. Okay, one more melting recipe. Now that we have our silicon press, we can toss a little bit of silicon in here to make ourselves printed silicon. And I'm just gonna make two, just so we can make the advanced inscriber, because that one can accept more than one item at a time. And that is always the first thing that you need to make if you have A2 stuff, I believe is the mod that adds those. So we can do one, two, three like that and make ourselves the engineer processor, I think, engineering processors and we can then turn the regular inscriber into an advanced one. And there we go, we can craft one of these, toss you down here, and now I can just say inscriber silicon press, press me the 14 silicon. And we're gonna firstly also press this. We need both of these anyways, so we can do possibly like a couple of silicons here, and then we're gonna do a couple of these. Pure certuses, this one, there we go. Uh, just do a couple. I think that's going to do two, three. And we can turn those to some acceleration cards. All right, two advanced card recipes, and we can turn those with some Fluix into the acceleration cards. I think this guy accepts five. Yeah, we're going to make another one of these. And another set of these. Like that you're gonna get five and you're just gonna get the one for the time being. Uh, we could possibly just do another recipe because that makes another two cards. Uh, yeah, that should be fine, but we need more silicon anyway, but this guy should be a bit quicker now. Yeah, that's much, much better. Uh, it is using a little bit more power, I think, but I think we are all good on this guy, just burning us the charcoal. So here we can do that. We can then do pure Certus Quartz and get the calculation processors done and the engineering ones done. And we can now actually get some storage buses and we can hook our drawers to the storage system. And here we go. We can make our three storage buses and we can now come over here and we need to figure out how I want to have the storage system. So in here, we're gonna just dig out the floor like so. 
we can hook up the storage bus on the bottom and we're just gonna bring the cable underneath for now so I don't have to make the facades and we can sort it out later if we wanna keep the cabling inside of the floor. But we can have a massive basement underneath that is not gonna be an issue so we can do something like this. Ooh. And we're also gonna hook it up to this side where I need to make another drawer controller but that guy is gonna go right there. Do I even have enough cabling for this? Oh, I do. Nice. Okay, so we are now gonna grab our storage system. We need some sort of way to move power, which I think we can do with power cells. Those should be a kind of a thing that we can do. We just need a bit of gold, a bit of lapis, and a bit of steel. Uh, and actually, for the time being, since this guy's not gonna drain that fast, we're just gonna remove this from all of our machines. Are you running at all? No, okay. So we're gonna grab our storage cell, we're gonna grab our energy acceptor, the energy cell. We're gonna then pick up, if we have any space in our inventory, uh, these three. So let's get rid of a few of these items here. We're gonna pick up these three cells, we're gonna pick up the drive and this, right? And then we're gonna come over to here, we can, put down a smart cable, we're gonna put down our crafting terminal right there. For the time being, our drive is gonna go like this. I think you can flip it so it faces upwards somehow. I'm not sure, we could use the drive fixtures. Those we can face upwards and we can keep them in the floor. That could be cool. Oh, you can do it with the drive as well. We just need a block underneath apparently. Boom, like that. We can toss in our storage cells. We then need to give this entire thing power. So we're gonna go here underneath real fast. We're gonna toss in the cell, wherever that guy went, right on top. We're gonna toss in the cell, the energy acceptor, and then underneath here, we're gonna put down our energy cell. We're gonna do this and say the output on top. So it's gonna start draining power fairly quickly for that matter. But we can now hopefully craft ourselves this. One, two. Power cell, one, two. We can do a couple of these. Are we out of gold? No, we have, uh, we have gold, but it's in here. Okay, we can toss everything in here now. Okay. So this, one, two. Okay. We're gonna put a power cell right underneath here. Like that, we're gonna say input on the bottom, you are gonna be output on all of these. We're gonna say link one, how do we do this? Like this, link ID one. And we can then put this guy here, link ID one, cool. So if we come over to our petrified fuel thingy generator doohicker right here, if we put this guy on top and if we put this guy over here, set all sides to input, uh, we need to set this side to output. How does one, uh, can I use a crescent hammer for this? I can. Okay, so that's gonna be the output. That's all good. So you're starting to store up. We need to do this for 50%. Uh, and you're gonna basically transfer power, hopefully. And it should charge up this guy right over here. The bottom is set to input. You are set to output. You are not linked because I didn't put the... Uh, this, aha, this should be good. Yeah, it's draining the power massively. So it's charging up the cell now over here, hopefully. Yep, there we go. We have power transfer. So we can use the link ID one to transfer power from wherever we were gonna make power. Uh, and I'm really thinking of using the fixtures. I think it's called a fixture. Yeah, this thing, ME drive fixture. Uh, we can just turn uh, this guy into that real quick. We can do this. Uh, and then we need two iron ingots, which should be accessible in the system. I think the paper won't have anywhere to go. Yeah, that's all good. So fixture, we do this, grab ourselves a smart cable. We can put you like this and then toss in our energy or our stored cells. Uh, for some reason, they do not show up but it should be fine. So we can cover all of this up. Oh, now they show up. Okay, cool. 
So we can just cover it up and uh, have a nice and connected storage system. We're also going to make some facades for this. Eventually, we're going to make more terminals as well. And we can just uh, organize it here very nicely. So we can now freely willy nilly toss everything in here because we have more space because of drawers, which is absolutely amazing. So it feels so good to do this. Uh, do we have anything else that we don't need? Uh, that can go into the storage system, possibly this, this, and this. And we can start cleaning up this once we start making more space for machines and stuff. The problem with using this drive fixture is that it doesn't allow me to set a priority, kind of like I can do here. So we can do the drive priority of minus a thousand. So that will be the last place items go. So we can then uh, just have everything stored on the drawers automatically because if I put in some redstone and this is on zero and that is on zero, I think it will put it into here. So we're gonna also make the, I think it's called the IO port, uh, this guy, ME IO port. We need two more ME drives, IO port. And we can toss you right here on the opposite side and this guy transfers from the cells to the disk drives. So we can grab, let's say, a bunch of these. We can toss we can toss them here. And it should empty everything and anything that can go into drawers. And we're just going to grab this guy since it has the most space. Uh, and then we can grab this one. And that should be possibly everything transferred from the disk drives to our storage system. And we can clean them up later furtherly uh, once we get uh, a few more drives in here so we can actually transfer everything to empty drives as well. I want to set up a basement in here in which we will put some manual machines like we had in the last playthrough of Combat Claustrophobia. So I'm gonna make a total of eight elevators here. I am gonna make them black, I think. Oh, can I not just die directly? I had to dye the wool. Really? Seriously, you're gonna do this to me, game? <sighs> really? All I had to do was die to wool. I have the pulverized charcoal. Uh, I th ooh, can you do the thing with the thing? Ah, okay. Who? Okay. I just... <laughs> that was a bit... Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do something like this, I guess. Should be good in all four corners. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna just drop down here. Place you down. And then we're gonna dig out this basement with our handy dandy hammer over here. Uh, and I'm pretty much gonna dig it out all the way down to one layer above bedrock, which is I think right here. Okay, so in here we're gonna have this guy, like so, and we can then zerp up and down. So I need to do a bit of digging, so let's cue a speedy up montage. Now that we have a wonderful looking basement, we can bring some power cables down here in the middle and we can set up our machines around them. So I'm gonna grab all of this that we have in here. I'm just gonna grab all of these, that, 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 and that. There we go. And we can then just our crescent hammer these guys over. Like so. And I totally don't have enough space. Give me there, there we go. So I'm thinking we can go like five machines on a side because we don't need more than that, I don't think. So if we wanna just measure it out a little bit, we would have, up, up, up. say we would have this kind of a square-ish thing. If we 
put that like that, we have space for one, two, three, four, five machines. So that is perfectly enough. And I'm actually gonna go one out here on these guys because the inside is gonna be set up with um, with white antimatter. So we need to go uh, just on a diagonal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. And here. Nope. We're gonna be one away from the elevators, which is perfectly fine. Yeah, that's all good. So we can then just set up our machines here in the middle. Go like that. And we can bring in this guy. I think we'll just bring it in the floor because it's going to make access to the machines a little bit easier if we have white antimatter like so. And we can then put the machines just here on top and configure them with either some chests on the bottom or something else. Sadly, chests do not open if they have a block above, but crates do from autumn. So we have a bunch of those in a row here on top and on the bottom, and we can have an input on the top, output on the bottom on all of these machines, so we can process whatever we want manually in them. Uh, and I have space for many, many more machines. I think it should be enough. And if we need more space for anything else, we can set it up in the walls here eventually. Uh, I don't think we're going to be putting some permanent stuff in here at least. We're mostly going to put manual machines. I want to keep everything that we put permanent above the basement and not use the basement for anything else. Maybe a mob farm, but I think we can put a mob farm in a different dimension so we don't have the lag over here. We can now make some facades and we can cover this up and I believe over here we have to cover you up like so. Uh, in the back here, we kind of covered it up with uh, that thing over there. And why are you still doing the weird drawer thing? Is it because there's a block behind you? It is. Okay, so we have to cover only the <laughs> only the drawer controller somehow. Or we could just leave it be, <laughs> I think. Uh, since we're going to have four of them on all four sides, I think it should be fine. You know how I tried so hard to cover all of these drawers with uh, the back being white? Um, we have compacting drawers that we don't have framed for and we can't hide them, so they're gonna show. And I'm thinking we're just gonna build another layer of uh, antimatter on the back and then another layer out, we're gonna build the black antimatter. And that means that we could change all of these to have black borders instead of white borders. I don't know if I'm gonna do that because <laughs> that would require a whole lot more work. I might, because it's me, and I tend to give myself more work than I need, but <laughs> uh, all of the work for nothing. I also don't know if I showed it specifically in a video, but I added glowing to my boots, which basically means that it places down uh, glowstone balls, or glow balls, I believe they're called, uh, these guys. Uh, so if we basically break this one, it's gonna, it should place another one. Oh, that one might light it up. Hold on. Ah, placed another one. There we go. That that places uh, a glow ball on the floor and it can also place them on the walls as well if it's too dark there. So you can see we have one right there, uh, which is kind of funny, uh, but that's okay. So basically that means that we never have to use torches ever again, but it also means that if we build anything that is going to have a roof on it, we're going to have glow balls on the floor all the time. So I'm thinking we're going to make another pair of boots and we're going to use these boots only for... Uh, for running around in the deep dark or mining because that is really useful but for in the base we might set up a different armor set. But I think all of that is gonna have to wait until next episode. We did a whole bunch of stuff in today's episode. We have a full periodic table, we have drawers, we have a bioenergistic system that is hooked up to said drawers. So we have a lot of things that we can accomplish from now on. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy the episode, make sure you hit the like button. You can also subscribe if you want to get notified when new videos go live. And you can support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.